Hey, you guys, welcome to the Get Fit with Jodell podcast here. This is a video recording for cold and flu season because it is cold and flu season. And I've had a lot of requests of people going, what do I do to prevent everything that's going around? Or if I already have it, what can I do to mitigate it so that it doesn't knock me on my feet like so many people are dealing with? So there's a bad case of influenza. There's some terrible cases of um, colds and viruses that are going around right now, and they're very severe. Um, how do I know this? Is because it's, as you can tell by the sound of my voice, um, my body tried to get it, and thankfully it didn't hit me as hard as it hit some other people, because I have kind of an arsenal of things I'm going to share with you today that will actually help you prevent, or at least you know, lessen some of the load of the different colds and flus and viruses that are going around. So let's get right into it. But I will say that um, I've, there's a lot of like this chesty, deep cough cold going on. And um, my own daughter got it and she never gets sick. And it was pretty rough on her, kind of a mild fever and this real chesty cold, um, a deep cough. So if you have something like that, or if you've been around people like that, Let's do some of the things I have here to make sure that you don't get it, or at least it doesn't knock you on your feet like it did my daughter. Now, I, d I suffered a lot less, and I'm thankful for that, but it's also because you have to keep yourself well during cold and flu season. Why is it cold and flu season? If we think about it logically, this is the time of year when the sun is out, but we don't truly really go out in it because it could be very cold where you are like it is where I am. And um, so it's, it's very difficult to get out and get that vitamin D. So cold and flu season is that way for a reason. It's that time of year when our vitamin D stores are low and we typically don't get those levels to stay up and stay high where we need them to help our immune system fight like it needs to. Um, also, this time of year, people don't drink enough water because it's cold. They don't want water. They sometimes want something like coffee or tea or you know, a warm beverage of some sort, and it's not always water that they're reaching for. But reach for your water. That's going to be one of my first tips is get that water in, you know, again, half your body weight in ounces every day, and more so if you feel a cold coming on because that flushes the toxins out, helps to flush the pathogens out. So it's very important to do that. Also, a little trick when you feel like a little tickle in your throat or a cough of some sort, add some apple cider vinegar to your water, just a little bit, and that actually helps to kill off pathogens, it helps to balance the body's immune system with the acid-alkaline balance, so really good to keep that on hand too. Now, um, sunshine, maybe you're not going to get out in it very long, but still go out in it. So maybe like one or two times a day, even if you bundle the rest of your body up, go out and expose your face, your eyeballs out to the sunlight and let that get into your skin receptors and your eyeball receptors and tell your body, hey, we have a little sunlight. It's not strong. We can't make too much vitamin D. But we can still get the benefit of being out of doors, fresh air, and telling our skin that, okay, this is day, like my circadian rhythm's good, I'm getting just a little bit of sun, and that's maybe all you need to just kind of keep yourself going to the window. Do not be like an indoor, you know, static nation of just like stay under the covers, stay hibernating, you know, we still need to go outdoors as much as possible. So if you can handle that, try that. The next thing I wanted to mention is when you feel a cold coming on or even a flu bug, maybe your stomach starts to feel a little queasy, one thing you can reach for is a probiotic. So I have a different blend here than I normally buy, but I was just on a trip. And because I felt the cold coming on on the trip, I had to just run out and grab whatever I could. But this was actually a really good one that I found called PB8. It's got some really great strains of bacteria. The ones that you're looking for when you feel a cold coming on or when you're trying to fight the flu is Lactobacillus rhamnosus and bifidobacteria. So find one with the rhamnosus in there and then also find one with bifidobacteria. Those two are really going to amp up the immune cell function in your gut and help you fight off those pathogens and the viruses that come in. Okay, the next arsenal that you wanna have is oil of oregano. Now this stuff is awful, awful, awful. Like you're gonna smell bad when you take it. But I will say that putting a couple drops of this underneath your tongue several times a day when you're around somebody who's sick, maybe somebody in your home came down with the cold or the flu and you don't want to get it, this is your buddy, okay? So put that two to three times a day under your tongue. You won't like it, but at least chug water right after it goes under your tongue and maybe it'll bypass your taste buds and you won't have to really taste it. 
So it sounds great. Like oregano sounds like, oh, I can add that to my food. Yeah, don't do that. I've made that mistake when I first started experimenting with it. Um, another thing that I have really found so beneficial when I'm when I was dealing with this, you know, onslaught, because no matter how healthy you are, bugs happen, okay? Colds happen, flus happen, we're gonna get it, we're gonna get that stuffy nose sometime. You can be the healthiest, most adapted person to a high fat diet or an, a, just the perfect exerciser and the perfect eater and the perfect hydrator, you're still going to get sick. Like we're exposed to bugs all the time. And sometimes it's your body's way of just detoxing all the crap out that it's built up over time. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. You don't have to thwart it. You don't have to take Sudafed and all these things that kind of damper the feeling. Let yourself have a day of rest. Let yourself cough some stuff out. Let yourself do what your body needs to do to get rid of the toxins that it's been exposed to. Um, going back to coughing, coughing is actually a natural mechanism that there's some sort of particle or you know phlegm or something in the lungs that it's trying to get out. So don't suppress it with coughing suppressants. You want to actually help your body get it out. So it, it, that goes for children or for you. Try not to suppress that cough, but get let your body get out what it needs to. You know, same with um, sneezing and hay, when you have allergies and hay fever. You don't have to take like allergy medication to, to get rid of that. Your body's doing that for a reason. So it might not be fun and flushing and runny nose and coughing might not be fun, but your body is doing it for a reason. So let it run its course and rest while that's happening. Okay, so this was my savior during this whole time because... I kept my airways really clean and clear by taking Amp V. This is a product by ATP Science, and it's an oil-based product where you just put um, it under your tongue, and, and um, or you can blend it in your coffee. It's really pepperminty, so it's nice to make like a little pepperminty drink, put it in your coffee or tea, um, or just put it in your mouth. And it's got grapefruit seed extract in it, which is a powerful antimicrobial. It's got or grapefruit. I shouldn't say grapefruit seed. It's grapefruit oil which is powerful antimicrobial. It also has um, peppermint, which is really kind of pleasing on your palate when you can't taste anything when you don't feel good. And then it's got coconut oil in it. So it's got some MCTs. It's got some CLA. Um, all of these things are great for fat burning, but what it's also good for is opening up your airways. So when you feel like you can't breathe or you're sucking through a straw because you've been sick, get some of this and get it down your gullet because it is amazing to give you that feeling of I can breathe again. It opens up your sinuses. It gives your lungs that open feeling for those of you that are dealing with that chesty cough. So, and it's actually, since it's good for fat loss, it's good to have this on hand at all times. If you want to do like morning cardio and amp up your fat loss production a little bit, just take this right on an empty stomach when you get up in the morning. Not only are you doing yourself a service for fat loss, but you're also kind of keeping the bugs clear from maybe getting exposed to pathogens and stuff like that. Because peppermint oil and grapefruit oil, they also kill off bad pathogens. So there's that. Keep that on hand. Um, ATPscience.com. It's called Amp B. Next. Okay, so you've got the cough or whatever and you don't want to deal with it anymore, but you don't want to take cough syrup um, and you're really sick of coughing, even though, like I just mentioned, you need to get some of that out or maybe that tickle that won't go away when you're trying to sleep at night. That's really irritating. Um, coconut oil, okay? It's unrefined, like a good brand of coconut oil. Take a spoonful when you go to bed at night and if that's when the coughing fit is happening and it'll at least dampen that tickle. Now note too that if it is like a you know a fungus or a cold that's really got you down, coconut oil is antimicrobial, it's antifungal, and it's it's really great to help kill off bad bacteria. So if you do have even just a yeasty overgrowth of candida all the way to something where you came in contact with some sort of bacterial infection, coconut oil is your go-to, okay? And also that amphi has coconut oil in it too, just so you know that. Um, silver. If you've heard of colloidal silver, this is something to have on hand too. Now, it's not like you have to go out and buy the nature's, you know, herb store that's at your house. I'm just giving you ideas of a few things you're going to want to have, or maybe you already have them at your house and you just want to keep them on hand for when you feel that little like, oh, I'm not starting to feel very good. 
okay? So colloidal silver, and what you do with this is you add it to your water, and you can drink it, and this is a very good antimicrobial too. However, I actually like to tip your head back and pour a couple drops down through your nose every couple of hours when you feel like that stuffy congestion coming on, because that'll keep your sinuses clear. It prevents sinus infections, so you're not going to do it all the time. Like, you're not just going to do it all through life. Like, you just keep it going. We don't want to build up too much of that in our system. But when you feel that onslaught of something happening, that's the time to put that down your little noggin and get it all into your sinuses. And that's a really great way to prevent sinus infections. Okay. So these are some things to implement. Here's some more. As we know, we want to take zinc at the very first sign of anything happening and a really powerful one. So this is like 30 milligrams. That's really powerful, but the reason you need to go higher with your milligrams is because when you're sick, your body's using up all that zinc. Same with the vitamin C. So we all know to keep vitamin C on hand too and really amp up your vitamin C production whenever you're not feeling well. Keep it coming. You don't just take this once a day. You got to take it several times a day to amp up that, that zinc status in your body so that you don't deplete it. When we deplete the zinc and we deplete the vitamin C, that's when we start getting sicker and sicker. Uh, of course, you've heard about echinacea, so it's always good to have echinacea on hand. Again, this is not something you'll just take once a day. When you feel stuff like this happening, all of these little things I mentioned, you need to be doing them like every couple of hours or rehydrating every 15 minutes. You need to be keeping your body hydrated and keeping that immune system well stocked. Like think of your immune system in your gut as having a pantry that's going, okay, bad things are happening and we need all of our arsenal of equipment to, to get to deal with this. So keep that, that little immune system pantry well stocked. Um, and then also there's really something to be said for essential oils. So burning them in your home or putting them in coconut oil and rubbing them on your body, putting them in your bath. Oh, I gave my toddler when she was sick with this chesty cold two baths a day. I let her stay in there as long as she wanted. And this was the stuff I would put in her bath. So rosemary oil, rosemary is very powerful, antimicrobial, clove as well. Um, I love balsam fir because it lowers cortisol, so you can do some balsam fir to help your stress system from the cold or from the virus calm down. Burn that in your house, and it just smells like a, a really yummy forest, so it's really nice and calming. And then, of course, eucalyptus. So I put this in her bath every time she took a bath so that it would open up her pass her airway passages so she could breathe a little better. And, and actually, a really steamy bath with eucalyptus or a steam shower would help to help her expel mucus and get that cough to come up and get that stuff out of her lungs. So that in the nutshell is uh, where I'm at with um, helping you this cold and flu season. So I hope that you've gained some information. Again, just to recap, um, you're going to do a lot of these things that I've mentioned every two to three hours. You're going to keep yourself from using artificial, you know, drugs and things that prevent you from coughing or, or bring a fever down. A fever is there for a reason, dude. You have to like let your body burn out those pathogens. So if it's like 100, 101, 102, that's fine. You're going to be okay. Let your body rest and have the fever. Let your body cough and get stuff out. The main thing is that you are resting and you're drinking plenty of water during that time. It's up to you whether you feel like eating. If you do, I recommend no sugar, um, more protein-based, and, and more fat-based. No dairy. Dairy causes mucus, so avoid that. Um, no alcohol, unless you really want to burn that mother out. You could do some whiskey. I mean, grandma's old cough medicine, you could do that as well, too. So, um, but apple cider vinegar works just as well and actually works really good for children, too, since we probably don't want to give them whiskey. So, but these, these kinds of things, it's like we need to let nature take its course, but you also need to give your body the best conditions for possible for recovery. So remember the sunshine, remember the water, remember the, the things here. And if you don't remember all the things I mentioned, go back and watch again. Keep yourself moist, the air moist and warm so you can, you know, cough or sneeze or get that stuff to come out and not just stay down in your body and getting you sicker and sicker. And don't forget probiotics because they really help as well too. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope that you feel better soon or that you don't get it at all. <laughs>